Nice to have your company this Thursday morning. Well, some serious questions about the warnings or lack of warnings given to residents in northern New South Wales as the region was hit yet again by flooding. Hard to imagine how tough it is for those communities right now. Absolutely devastating to be back here again. Let's discuss with Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie and 2GB's Chris Smith. Nice to see you both this morning. Hi. Jackie, if, let's just look at Lismore for a moment because residents were told it was OK to return to their homes in the afternoon. Then a fresh evacuation order was issued in the middle of the night as they slept. And look, to make matters worse, the warning siren wasn't working. Can you understand why they're feeling so angry and so abandoned right now? Uh, I can understand why they're feeling really angry and abandoned, that's for sure. The other thing is this is the second time they've been hit. My goodness me, they've cleaned up the houses, uh, you know, they've gone back in them and then they've been hit again and then this is going on on top. This is just god awful, I tell you. I reckon there wouldn't be a heart in Australia that's going out to mm. Lismore this morning. It's just atrocious. Yeah, and Chris, I mean, it's not just Lismore this morning too. I mean, uh, yesterday on the show, this sort of, sort of all happened as we were on air. It was all very unexpected. Byron Bay woke up. There was no warning at all there. They woke up basically to find themselves underwater. I spoke to someone in Byron Bay as this was unfolding and she was telling me that we are on to the authorities here. They'd better learn from what happened mm. two weeks ago and they haven't learnt from what happened two weeks ago. And look, we're all loath to criticise volunteers, especially volunteers who go out to save your life and risk their own, right? Mm. But somehow in flood prone areas and bushfire prone areas, we've got to say to the volunteers, hey, we need part professionals running this operation. You need to be paid, you need to be on the job and you need to get things right, especially mm. at the beginning. Well, I mean, and I don't think much of the criticism has been to those about those volunteers who are on the ground there. Um, some of the residents we've been speaking to this morning have talked about the fact that you've got headquarters in Sydney so far removed, Jackie, that they don't have an idea of what's actually happening on the ground. Maybe that's something they need to be looking at. No, oh, it sounds like the Canberra bubble. Which one are you talking about? Sorry. <laughs> SES yeah, headquarters yeah, based they in are Sydney. Correct. When, mm. when, you're going through, um, when you're going through an emergency like that, people need to have boots on the ground. You need to be making decisions from the ground, not sitting in a headquarters in another state. It's just yeah. ridiculous. Well, let's talk about that Canberra bubble you just touched on there, Jackie. Scott Morrison's budget night. Interrupted by that unprecedented attack um, by outgoing Senator Conchetta Fioranti Wells. She's described him as a bully with no moral compass, unfit for office. And today, the pressure is on Anthony Albanese to show he's got what it takes to become PM as Labor delivers its budget response. But, Jackie, this wasn't the first personal attack we've heard on Scott Morrison. We also had those leaked text messages from Gladys Berejiklian, Barnaby Joyce. Do you think Scott Morrison is a bully? Um, I have no doubt that um, he's a bully. I've dealt with him one-on-one. -on -one. I think I made that quite clear over the refugees. I want to say this about Connie. She's one of the top performers up here. What annoys me is I don't care if you've got personal differences with people in, um, in Canberra, in your own team. If they are the best person for the job, then you should put the country first and that's where they should be. She's been sitting on that back bench for a long time now, all because she won't stand there and not at Scott Morrison. And that's what it comes down to and it's absolutely atrocious. You know what, he got everything he deserved um, from Connie this week and, 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 and quite frankly good on her. It's been a long time coming. I imagine she's been seething for a long, long time to get that off her chest. It wasn't just about the pre-selection either. Uh, this has been building for a long time. So like I said, top performer, uh, should have been a minister, all the rest and should have been at the very least second on that Senate ticket. Nothing against Jim Marlin, but this woman is just a top performer, mate. You don't get much better than that. So you don't reckon it was just a bit of sour grapes because um, obviously she was no. placed on winnable position on that Senate ticket? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So in the branch stacking and all that that went on, it was a real bully. It was real bully tactics, both from Morrison and Hawke. It's quite absolutely disgusting. Those, um, those selection processes have their place and they haven't been used. And when you're coming in as a captain's pick, because you don't like somebody instead of putting the country first, I think that's time for you to leave, leave as the leader of this but country. But the last time Your this happened, up. Jackie, the last time this happened, they put Jim Molan in the unwinnable position and it went straight in their face. The entire nation, especially those in New South Wales, who know the value that he brings to uh, a government, they were outraged that he was put in an unwinnable position. So it was an unwinnable kind of decision to make, wasn't it? No, look, I'm telling you now, she is a top performer. She should have been on that. She should have also been a minister the last few years as well. This comes down to personal differences and not who, not, it is not based on merit up here when it comes to Scott Morrison, and he is a bully. I don't care what anyone says, he's an absolute bully. 
Well, look, and I guess we'll find out if that mud sticks when it gets to the election time, uh, which will be in the next six weeks or so. Um, and look, we're going to hear Albo's budget reply um, tonight. He's said he's going to tick off the coalition's commitments. I mean, there's a bit of pressure on him tonight. Jackie, he seems to be banking on ScoMo losing this election. He's not taking too many risks. But do you reckon that's something that could backfire? You know, what I know is this that it, those people that have been looking after our, our grandmothers and our grandfathers or our mothers and our fathers in aged care, those ones, those childcare workers that have been looking mm. through, our, looking after our kids through pandemics, they're about to get a tap, they're about to um, pay more tax over the next 12 months. I would hope that Labor, knowing that they are well, that they are already underpaid um, in, in those jobs, will do something about that because that will be a significant lift. But I can tell you, nobody, neither Liberal or Labor, is saying or telling the truth when it comes to some of the most valued people that went through COVID and did everything that they did, did an exceptional job, is that they'll be paying more tax in the next 12 months. And that's the truth of the matter. What do you think of his tactics, Chris? Um, is, is he playing, he's playing it safe, but does he need to be bolder? Oh, look, there's no guts or glory in a small target approach. Like, we want to hear from him. If he's good enough to be the Prime Minister, what are the big ticket items? You can't just say, I'm going to increase everyone's wage by writing a letter to the Fair Work Commission. And in terms of cost of living, See, I'm not convinced that the federal government have the levers to increase cost of living in a short space of time. I think most fees and charges are held by the state government. So what's he going to do about that? This is the time. Step up. Don't just mm. play a game of snap, which is what he's played for 18 months. I'll snap that. I'll snap this. Yeah, we can do that as well. Mm. Now, nah, come on. What do you got? Yeah, and just, just very quickly, we had uh, Warney's um, memorial, the farewell. Uh, the special moment for you from last night, Jackie, quickly. I have to be honest, I was stuck in the chamber last oh. night, but I have to say, um, you know, great loss. I think he's Australia's, he's Aussie's greatest larrikin, and I think for me, I'll always remember him and his work for charity. It's been bloody phenomenal, you know, that yep. he just didn't want really people, he didn't go out there and brag about it, he just got the job done, and he was just really special, you know. I think that I grew up watching him um, play cricket and... Uh, you know, so I like the old footballers and it's just someone that will always stay in my mind. He was just phenomenal. He was just probably the best there ever is and, mm. and God love him. Just a, stru a true Aussie larrikin. Authentic. Chris? Watch it on replay, Jackie. You've got to. Oh, I wasn't well. planning on staying up to watch it. I accidentally turned it on. I was mesmerised by it. Part roast, part tribute. And then mm. when those three kids got behind the microphone... A large part emotion. They got me, and I know oh. they got so many other people. Got all of us. It was beautiful. You know, it was incredible. Yeah. Well said. Nice to see you both this morning. Thank you. We'll